Live from the heart of New York City, it's the morning show with Mike and Juliet. Thursday, your hosts, Mike Jarek and Juliet Huddy. Hey, thank you all for being here. Uh, We kind of have to start this morning with a little bit of a painful reality. It affects up to 50% of all married couples in this country. Divorce. Even the most amicable of splits can be a tough process, but when things turn real nasty, you can guess who the real casualties are. Let's do this. Let's bring in child advocate and uh, attorney Trini Stovall. Stovall, excuse me. And the author of How to Say It to Your Kids, psychologist Dr. Paul Coleman. Trina, you're sitting next to uh, the the real victims here. Tell us, uh, I mean, what what are you observing? What I'm observing is this is a classic case of every single thing wrong that a parent can do when they're going through a divorce. This is ridiculous. I cannot believe this. I have listened to these parents say, I, me, Mm. him, her, everything, but what's best for these children through this entire conversation. They would rather, the mother is called CPS, that's the foster care system. She would rather her children be in foster care than work this out with the father. They have to work together. I tell you, Paul, uh, children want security and structure in their life, and they don't have any of that right now. Yeah, they don't have any of it right now. I think the parents are here because I think this is really their their call for help. Yeah. They have no goodwill between each other. When that happens, you don't give the other the benefit of the doubt. You assume the worst about what the other's motives are. You, You believe that that's true and then you fight about what truth but is. what is the future for these two, Alex and Stephanie? N- it, nothing good down the road for them. I can tell you, each of them is going to have problems. Stephanie, from what I understand, has had trouble in school, tends to act out a little bit. You're going to end up with two different types of guys that you get close to. The first kind of guy could be the guy that you can lead around on a leash <laughs> because that's the one guy you can trust, or you're going to end up with a guy who hurts you and lets you down much like you've been let down Can you now. be happy in any of those relationships? No, you cannot be happy because those are not mature do you, relationships. Are you, are you outdating? I mean, do you, are you have boyfriends and stuff like that? Uh, yeah. Even at a young age, are you finding yourself maybe picking those types of people? Can yeah. You, yeah. Are you acting out sexually? No, no. Alex, how about you? Is that something that they may have in Acting out sexually is a risk. I mean, she's still young at, at 15 or 16, but between now and four years from now, I think Alex, I think he's probably been the therapist at home. He tries to get each parent to work yeah. on things. That's too much responsibility for him. Do you, feel, do you feel like you're kind of being the parent here, in a way? Not really the parent, but the therapist, yeah. Mm. The therapist, goodness gracious, speaking to that, Trenny. Is there any way to reverse this behavior. The children are resilient. The reality is we are blessed to know that children are resilient. And if these parents take the time right now to stop this behavior, and it has to stop, okay. if they're willing to stop this behavior and to get into some therapy, and I don't mean therapy for her. She says, I went to therapy yet again. It's not about you. This is for these children, everything. They need to be in therapy. You all need to be in therapy together as a unit. All four of you have to go to therapy. Is that possible to, for you guys to do? We tried this. We have tried this, I assure you. I have tried to be civil with him. Like I stated, the psychiatrist asked me to please come to the counseling sessions after with them and to come with him for post-divorce. I can they, can they do it. it separately? Because it just sounds like Brenda here is saying there's no like, way. In- it, it, it sounds like they need to find an appropriate provider that knows how to address the situation. The, yeah. the children need to be in therapy individually and with them, and they need to learn that they are still a family unit. These children don't feel that this is a unit. They've got to understand right. Paul, that they have yes. to co-parent all together as a say unit. They have to communicate, and they cannot fight in front of these children. Why right. is that so devastating? Because when they fight in front of the children, what they're really saying is, you can't count on us. We're not trustworthy. We're going to make you anxious and uncomfortable and fearful. And that's, that doesn't help them. In they the have future. to co-parent. They've got to be more flexible. They can be more flexible. They have to put their egos aside. They're, he's focusing on too much. I want them to be disciplined. She's more lenient. They're really bouncing off each other. They're compensating for each other. And they're not putting what's sensible for the kids in front. If you are at home and you are going through this type of situation and you're saying, how, how can I avoid this? What are some of the first things that I can do? We're going to have Paul give you some tips on our website, mnjshow.com. Trini, thank you, too. Yeah, and we're going to have you guys all talk together and we'll see if we can help work something out here. Thank you for being so honest with us. Thank you guys for being on. Coming up next on our show, how to cut corners and save money in today's tough times without leaving your home. Yahoo's Heather Cabot is next.